Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Kindle Paperwhite and the new Sony Pure ST3. Paperwhite's been out roughly about a year or so, or just under a year. Sony Pure ST3 is not officially out yet, but we want to give you a full-on comparison of what these two bring to the table. There's some main differences. The Kindle Paperwhite is a front lit, so it has a LED lights that are built into the bezel that shine into the screen and it allows you to read in the dark. The Sony e-reader has resisted this type of technology and instead they make you buy a $60 case with a, a, a reading light. So it's not like a front light display, it's basically light that flashes on it. These two e-readers have a fair amount in common. They're both 6 inches. They both have 1024 by 758 resolution. The T3 is a 1 gigahertz processor while the Paperweight only has 800 megahertz. Sony has 512 MB of RAM while the Kindle Paperweight has half of that at 256. You have about the same amount of space, 1.2 gig when you pump it out of the box for the first time versus the 2 gigs on the Paperweight. This, the Sony has a SD card, so you can actually enhance the storage of the 32 gigs. Well, the Kindle does not have an SD card, but, you know, cloud storage and all that type of stuff. And they both should last you about two months of constant use. Why you see this open back is because this is where the SD card slot is, which we wanted to show you, and that this is where the case snaps onto. We're leaving it off for this review because it angles the reader at a different uh, angle. It doesn't look that great. This is the included case with the reader. It's the sleep cover. So you don't have to pay anything additional. Nope. It comes with that as part of the cost. Unfortunately, despite all the concept uh, videos and everything you've heard, it does not come with the light. This is a separate case you'll have to buy for anywhere between 50 and $60 afterwards to snap onto the back. It also doesn't come with a stylus either. It doesn't come with a stylus. We're actually using a stylus from the PRST2, so you also lack a stylus. So with a stylus, a lit case, and the reader itself, you're looking at 200 plus dollars for this device. Okay, so home screens look fairly similar. You have books that you have recently added, uh, but the Kindle kind of promotes books that they want you to buy on the main screen. So you could run into the situation where, oh, you know, I want to check this out. Oh, it's taking me to the Kindle store. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the Sony e-reader, it's just full of books that you have added, purchased, or have read recently. Uh, they both have similar options in terms of like settings and things like that. We won't show you any of that today. Primarily, we want to show you the reading experience and the bookstore experience because that's pretty well the core reason why you're buying these e-readers. Let's check out the reading experience. Now, it's important to note that Amazon uses their own proprietary format, uh, Mobi, AZW, and, and a myriad of other, you know, uh, things like that. So what this won't allow you to do is shop at other ebook stores and load them on your e-reader. Sony uses EPUB, so this means you can buy books from Kobo and, and Texter and other companies like that and then load them on with Adobe Digital Editions. Exactly. They look pretty much the same on the um, uh, contrast front. They both have very nice back colors. They're nice and uh, clear, almost white. They're a little bit off gray. You can see Mike is doing a long press, which what this triggers is a bunch of different things. So you can make highlights from there. You can make notes. So if we want to click add note, we will show a keyboard comparison. They're quite similar in the fact that they're not all bunched together like, uh, say, the Kobo Aura, but the Kindle looks a little bit 3D-esque with the shading. But they're both really nice keyboards. They both don't have dedicated number rows, so you have to find those in alternatives. Yeah, it have, doesn't take up a lot of screen real estate. They have quite a bit of settings, and they both type very fast. They won't play catch-up. They won't lag. It's not going to stall And it has device. predicted typing on both as well. Absolutely. You also have some... Facebook and Evernote social media options here. We can change the text by pressing the uh, font option here. We have very simple text change. Everything changes live. A little bit slower on the Sony. I think the Paperwhite, although it's not sporting as fast of a processor, I think it's a little bit more refined. You have very strange 
um, fonts here. You don't see Helvetica or Cecilia or anything normal or even Times New Roman. You have really number two and universe next, which <laughs> I don't think are very conventional. But you do have about, uh, what is that, seven different types of font. You have navigation, of course. And um, this, once again, is not front lit, whereas the Kindle is. We also have handwriting, which the Kindle does not. So you have the ability to scribble things out, circle things, underline things. And uh, although you won't be able to export this, it will save on the individual book. Yeah, it's one thing Sony has done very well over the years is add a lot of kind of cool handwritten support. And this is especially interesting when you edit PDF files because it really allows you to edit PDFs, circles, make highlights, take notes on the fly. It's good for students. It's good for people that have like a lot of technical documentation that need to reference specific things. Right. Or if you're looking at a 300 page document, you want to, you know, this is important to highlight. This exactly. is a map that we're taking on the airline today. Important. Speaking of 300 page documents, we have our monster manual here. You see the paperweight loaded very quickly. The blacks are also a lot blacker than the blacks on the Sony. Yeah, it looks Very gray, gray and faded. You can swipe to turn pages. You can pinch and zoom. Very quick pinch and zooms on the paper white. Although every time you pinch and zoom, you have to let it render. And when you're navigating around, there's no real idea or indication on where you are on the page. Yeah, so you could quickly lose track of where you are in a document. Whereas on the Sony, you have a little mini map here to tell you at the bottom right, you now you're at the bottom left, and then when you let go, fortunately the Sony takes forever and a day to render. So finally rendered there. Actually it wasn't done, so um they both have their ups and downs like the paper white, you can't really lift your finger in between moving it around. You see it tries to render every single time, so uh, they both look very nice, though. I think it's just a little bit faded on the on the Sony compared to um, what you see on the Kindle. And once you find that sweet spot on the Sony, you can actually hit the page turn button and flip a page and maintain that. But you can't actually do that no. with the Kindle. No, you can't. You have to sort of unzoom out and then turn the pages uh, out by default. On the paper white, if we move up to some text can actually make notes in a PDF, which is very rare. Don't really get a lot of that with long pressing. So you can yeah, see totally. that you've altered that PDF so that it now has your note. And on the, um, on the Sony, unfortunately you can't long press and make notes, but you can do handwriting, which is a little bit more effective. So if you say, hey, look at the Cyclops, I want you to take note of that. And then you lend your e-reader to somebody, they can then take that and it'll be on that page so um, you can also on the Kindle define things within a PDF and make highlights and make notes dictionary Wikipedia translation so a lot more options for PDF um, on the well I wouldn't say a lot more options different options I'll correct myself yeah you can, you can handwrite on this you have better pinch and zooming but when it comes to singling out physical text on the PDF, other than just drawing on it, you can do a lot more with the paperwhite. Yeah, I mean, these e-readers are fairly the same in terms of specs and overall functionality, but you can do different things on both of these devices. It comes down to it in what's appealing to you, you know? Are you the type of person that likes just taking quick handwritten notes, or do you like making highlights and looking words up within a dictionary? Exactly. We want to hear from you. Which one of these devices is the most compelling to you? And let us know why. You can drop a comment on this video on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodereader. And for all the latest news, previews, interviews like that, you can check out our main website at uh, goodereader.com. And these are the two stores. We won't really get into it, but you can see how they're quite different here. They both sell newspapers, uh, e-books, or you can pre-order books in advance, and, and things like that. So uh, for a comparison video of the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite versus the Sony PRS-T3, for goodereader.com, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.